Hi everyone, it's Carolyn from In The Gray, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about seedlings, how to start them, and how to care for them, and eventually get them into your garden. So, the first is storing your seeds. For a long time, I didn't understand that when you are keeping seeds for any long term, um, you need to make sure that you keep them in a watertight container and um, in a cool, preferably dark place. And so when you buy seeds, when you buy seeds, you'll notice on the seed packet, it has a sell by date. And on the back of the packet, there are directions about just some general information about the variety, about to how to plant them, and kind of a description of what it is. But you're also gonna have a sell by date. And that sell by date is a determination, it's usually a year after you purchase the seeds. Now, seeds will germinate after that sell by date or the packed for date if they are stored properly. So if you get things like a plastic container, I got one of these at a craft store um, where you can kind of put the different seed types and uh, store them in plastic so that they're not um, exposed to the humidity, they're not exposed to the moisture. Um, this is see-through, so it is still exposed to the light, but if I put it in the closet, it's going to remain safe there. And my, the likelihood that my seeds are going to germinate for a longer period of time are going to be greater. So that's the first thing. Second thing, you need to have somewhere to start the seeds. So typically what you want to do is get a small container, like this is a four cell thing that I had purchased something in a long time ago and just saved it. They have different um, kits that you can buy that are like this. The Bootstrap Farmer. The Bootstrap Farmer has a germination trays like this. And it's really important that you have a good soil mixture. I typically like to put mine in some kind of container. I've used a cardboard box. I have this sitting around. And you put the seed starting mix in there and you want it to be light and fluffy and retain moisture. So, because what a seed needs to germinate is moisture, um, some heat, and sometimes light. But if you put them in really dense soil, it's much more difficult for the seedling to reach out of the soil. So you wanna do something with light soil. I have a seed starting video um, on starting onion seeds which I talk about kind of the method here. If you don't have those things available to you, you can use things like um, the rotisserie chicken container. If you just wash it out, put some holes in the bottom, you can use those kinds of things to start your seeds in. Once you have your seeds started, I have some seeds that have just started germinating um, and they'll be moved to different locations once they get big enough but you can kind of pluck these out individually and get them established. Okay. So what I wanted to talk to you about is once you have seedlings started and you have them in how you want them arranged, what you want to do is have your grow lights. Now, this shelf has one grow light on each shelf. Ideally, there will be two, mostly because most of these lights are LED lights, so there's not a lot of, um, range that that light is hitting. And so what you want to do is keep your lights as close to your seedlings as you can so that they don't become leggy. Um, tomato seedlings are very resilient and are able to bounce back so they're not as big of a concern as say a pepper becoming leggy. And so I have a lot of different things started here. What I'm trying to let you know is that moving these lights is kind of critical. We got these um, Flexi ratchet light fixture hangers. And so we can just easily pull these. And then if we need to lower them, we can just press this and it'll lower it back down. Okay, so that gives you the ability to have sort of a higher side and a lower side and adjust them as need be. Another thing you want to do when you're starting seeds indoors is get a fan going on the seedlings or touch the seedlings as much as you can. 
you want to make sure that the seedlings are developing a strong stem because when they go outside, they're going to be exposed to all of these elements and you want to prepare them as best you can for that. The third really important step, which I made a rookie mistake last year with the cabbage uh, seedlings that I started, is you need to harden off the plants. Now, that was really confusing to me at first. However, this is what hardening off is. If the plant has been started indoors under artificial light, then it is not prepared for the power of the sun. Because the sun's light is so much more powerful than any light that we use inside, it's important that we prepare the plants for that. So you might want to take your plants outside when it's a, a warm day, but overcast, so that they're not exposed to too much of the powerful sun. If you do, and you gradually work up over time, if you take your seedlings outside every day, uh, maybe the first day you leave them outside for an hour. The second day you can leave them outside for two hours. You just have to pay attention to how they're doing. Remember that the sun is going to dry out the soil a little bit, so you want to make sure you keep an eye on that. And so eventually you'll let the seedlings stay outside overnight and they'll become acclimated um, to the outside weather and then they'll be ready for you to transplant into the soil. You also want to make sure that you're taking into account the temperature of the soil when you are transplanting. So let's get these seedlings moved outside. Okay, so I wanted to just talk about really quickly another issue with seedlings. So sometimes you'll have the exact same variety. This is Baxter's Bush Cherry Tomato. These seeds were started at the same time. They were potted up to this size at the same time. They were kept in the same tray. But you can see how one could overshadow the other. So this little guy hasn't got enough light to uh, grow as well. So what I've tried to do is put the larger tomatoes in one tray. Now you could take all of these out and keep them far enough apart so that they will, you know, all of them will get enough light. I don't have enough space to do that. And so I've put, in, I've put the tall ones together and then the shorter ones together so the shorter ones will get a chance to get enough light. Another thing that we have going on here is that I am bringing this guy out every day to harden him off. Now he's been through a few things. This is a cayenne pepper that we had in our garden last year in this bag. Um, he's going to go into the ground when it's warm enough this May. However, I am bringing him out. One of the consequences of these grow bags, if you try and bring them inside, is that the air, the dry air, will take a lot of the moisture out. And so he struggled a little bit, but there are lots of leaves coming back. And so I'm bringing in this, this cayenne pepper plant out so we'll have a full grown needs to recover but a full-grown cayenne pepper um, when we put our peppers in in may so i hope that some of this information has helped you if you started some seedlings if you run into some problems remember that if your seedlings start to turn yellow it's typically because you're watering them too much um, if you use any kind of seed starting mix that will typically have enough fertilizer in it for your seedlings to begin with so um, if they're turning yellow it's probably because you're overwatering. Um, I hope this information has helped you in starting your garden or caring for your seedlings. If you've already started seeds, leave in the comments down below what you've started. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and we'll see you next time. If you like this video, hurry up.